the screens are bigger, the megapixels are higher, and so are the prices. We're taking a look at the new Galaxy S20 lineup, and Samsung says that they have completely re reinvented the camera, especially with the Galaxy S20, which has a whopping 100x space zoom on the back. Let's take a look at all three of these phones and figure out what's new and what's different. Let's start with the Galaxy S20 Ultra. So the Ultra has a huge 6.9 inch display and it has a 120 hertz refresh rate. So it give, should give you much smoother motion when you're scrolling, and especially when you're playing games and first person shooters, uh, for sure. Uh, but the real action is around back because now you have, in addition to your regular and ultra wide camera, you have a new folded optic lens that can go up to 10X lossless zoom and up to 100X uh, digital zoom, they're calling it space zoom, and we've seen the results so far and they look pretty good. You can get up to, I would say, about 30x before you get that hand shape, because once you get in super close, you get amazing detail, but you also get a little bit of blurriness once you get past 30x, but it is pretty great. One other cool feature that is available on all three of these phones is called single take. So what you'll do is like a single press of a button, the Galaxy S20 line will record about 10 seconds of video, and then with that, it'll spit out all sorts of different results because it's recording with all the different lenses at once. So you will get a video, a sped up video, that's just great for social. You'll get a black and white image, you'll get a portrait shot that you can change the live focus video effect on. So what I like about this is that they're trying to take the guesswork out of taking really good pictures and videos that are very easy to share. So I think so yeah, small take, I think, is one of the killer features of the S20. So let's move on to the Galaxy S20 Plus. And the big difference here is that it's a 6.7 inch display instead of 6.9 inches. And on the back, you have a main 64 megapixel camera instead of 108 megapixels on the S20 Ultra. This is definitely a lot more one hand friendly. Uh, and, we'll do that. and you still get two flavors of 5G and sub 6 gigahertz, as well as millimeter waves. So you will use this on all the major carriers. So if we take another step down into the Galaxy S20, which is definitely the most compact and one hand friendly of the bunch at 6.2 inches, but it's not going to be coming to Verizon because it has only sub 6 gigahertz 5G and Verizon has only support for millimeter waves. So that's one of the, the cons of this headset, but for all the other carriers, uh, it'll be available at $999. So let's talk about pricing. So for the S20 Ultra and the Ultimate and cameras, as well as the, the screen size, it's going to start at a very steep $1,400. So that's $100 more than the S10 5G last year. For the S20 Plus, that's at uh, $1,200. So it's $200 uh, less than the Ultra, and you get pretty much all of the main features with the exception of the, the camera specs. And the regular S20 is gonna start at $999, so it's the most affordable of the premium flagship phones. Uh, but again, there's some trade-offs in terms of 5G, depending on whether or not you have Verizon. Okay, so let's talk about specs. The main differences between the S20, the S20 Plus, and the S20 Ultra. So they all come with the Snapdragon 865 processor, which is supposed to be the fastest that Apple has ever had, and should give you close to the iPhone 11's performance, but we'll have to wait and see. In terms of RAM and storage, they're all going to have 12 gigs of RAM, which is a lot, and 128 gigs of storage to start. And for the S20 Plus, you'll have the option of going up to 512 gigs of storage, but you're still maxed out at 12 gigs of RAM. If you get the S20 Ultra, you get the Ultra in the specs. So with that one, you'll have the option of going up to 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. The good news is that all three of these phones have micro SD card slots for expansion. If you're wondering about staying power, uh, we're worried too, because all three of these phones have 5G. We have to wonder how long they're going to last on a charge, especially with the 100 flavors display. But you are getting better capacity across the board. So the regular S20 is going to have a 4,000 milliampere battery. The S20 Plus is going to have 4,500 milliampere and the S20 Ultra is going to have the biggest of the bunch at 5,000 milliamps. So our hope is that all three phones will last throughout the day, but we're going to have to see what sort of impact the screen sizes have, as well as 5G. So if I was going to pick one to probably use every day, it would likely be the S20 Plus because it gives you that balance of a huge screen size with all the specs and most of the camera features that the S20 Ultra offers. But if you really want like, the biggest display and impress your friends with a 100x space zoom, the S20 Ultra is going to be where it's at. This is Mark Spoonow for Tom's Guide, and this is our first look at the S20 lineup.